What is up YouTube, Egg6 Solutions here, and today I am bringing you another video, and this is a overview video on PS4 all-in-one tool for 176. So if you are into the PlayStation 4 modding community, this video will definitely be for you. This is a all-in-one RTE tool for PlayStation 4 on the firmware 176. Now, if you don't have a console on 176, then this will obviously not work. So this tool is strictly for 176 consoles only, 176 PlayStation 4s only. This will not work on a higher firmware version than 176. Now the reason for this is obviously because of the exploits and the vulnerabilities in 176 that allows you to do all of these different things. So on screen here you can see this is the next gen update forum for PlayStation 4. Under PS4 mods and cheats, Modded Warfare did release a forum post with his overview video and all of the different features, pictures and GIFs in this one thread. So if you do want to go ahead and read that and look into this, you can go ahead and do so. I will leave a link in the description below. It will also have a download for the installer version and and the portable version if you want to download that you can go ahead and download that from here so enough rambling what i'm going to do now is open the directory and as you can see there are quite a few files in here this is required for the tool to function properly so be sure not to delete any of the files that you see in here i'm going to go ahead and open the executable and there you have it there is the ps4 aio tool i thought i'd also mention that this tool has a built-in auto updater so in the future there will be automatic updates pushed out for people that are using this tool so in the top right hand corner of the screen you'll see a build version number now obviously this may change when we push out a new update so without further ado let's get straight into the overview first thing i'm going to be looking at is the payload injection so as you can see we have a drop down menu here and we have four different payloads already in place if we go back into the directory of the ps4 aio tool you'll see there is a directory called payloads and inside here this is where the four payloads are stored so if you do want to add some more payloads of your choice then you can simply drag and drop your payload into this directory and then on the tool it should appear in here and then you can go ahead and inject it on your playstation we also have a drop down list here which allows you to choose between a elf and a bin file for your payload type a button here for custom this basically allows you to import your own custom payload by simply drag and dropping it into this box or go ahead and click on the three dots and then choose the location of your payload. You should also notice that there is a checkbox for change IP payload. Now this is for the payloads that require modifying your IP within the actual payload and editing the hex bytes to change your IP to your desired IP on your console. And that is a lot of hassle to do. So what this basically does is automates that. So if you check this, it will automatically use the IP address that you have on your console. And then when you import the payload and inject it, it will see that the IP is changed to the IP that you currently have on your console and will inject successfully without you actually modifying that file. So what I'm just going to do quickly as a demonstration is inject the payload just to show you how this works. So obviously on your console you're going to want to go to the playground so that you can inject the payload. Go to code execution and hit go and then when it's waiting for the payload you can simply choose the payload of your choice. So for this video I'm going to select fully enable debug settings v2 which basically allows you to have access to your debug settings. I also made a video on that if you want to go ahead and watch that. Select the payload type and then click on inject payload. As you can see on the PlayStation, it flickered there and the code execution stage has said not started. This means it's done and you'll also have a message that says done underneath the button as well. So you know that has been injected. So just to show you that this does work, I'm going to go ahead and go over to the system settings to see if the debug settings have appeared. And there you have it. Debug settings are now showing on our PlayStation 4 console. So now that we know that the injection has been successfully injected, underneath the payload injector, you'll see that we also have a mod menu injector. Now this is obviously self-explanatory. This is for injecting mod menu. There are only two mod menus inside of this drop-down menu, and that is because there are simply not a lot of menus out for 176. And the ones that are, are made by too much for you. And as you can see, we have the GTA 5 Azero menu and the Far Cry Azero menu for the different games there. So all you'd want to do is simply click on the menu of your choice, go inside of the PlayStation Playground, click on code execution, and then simply click inject menu. The exact same process as injecting the payload. So it's just a quick and easy way to inject the different menus. So the next thing we're gonna look at is the package merging utility. Now what this allows you to do is simply merge a lot of package files into one file. And this is very useful for massive games Games, demos or maybe updates that you have for a game that you want to merge into one file so that you can install on your PlayStation. When you're installing lots of different package files on your PlayStation it's most likely going to fail because you have like 10 or 20 parts 
This tool basically eliminates that process and basically puts into one file so that all you have to do is install that one file. So all you'd want to do is simply drag and drop it into the box or click on the button that says add package files. And as you can see, Code Advanced Warfare 1, 2, 3, 0 and then 1 have been inserted into the box. Now all you'd want to do is simply go to start and as you can see, it merges the file and shows you how many files that is merged so far. You can also click on the three dots button that allows you to change the destination of where you're going to output the merged file. I've left it as default, which is the directory of the PlayStation 4 AIO tool. As you can see, merging has been successful. Go over to the directory of PS4 AIO tool. We see that we have the one package file that has been merged together. So it's around 6.2 gigs. So now we don't have two and we have one instead. And we can go ahead and install that package file on our PlayStation without any errors. On the right hand side of the tool, you'll see we also have an FTP browser. What I'm going to do on the WebKit is simply launch the FTP and debug settings so that we can connect to the FTB browser on the tool. I'm going to go ahead and press X on that and boom there you can see we have the different directories and files on our PlayStation hard drive. We also have a right click function so that you can import, export and delete and we also have those buttons down there and you can also double click inside of a directory to see the contents of it. Obviously there's nothing inside of this directory but you get the idea and we can also double click on this and this will also take us back. So this is really nice because you don't have to use a third party FTP client you can just use the built in one instead and it's really really easy to use. Moving on to the UI editor. If we go ahead and click on connect you'll see that it's connecting to our PlayStation and is now downloading all of the image files on our PlayStation 4 console. It shouldn't take too long unless you have a lot of image files and as you can see we have the thumbnails of each application and game on our PlayStation 4 console. What you can do here is simply extract or replace the images by right clicking on each thumbnail and click on backup files back up to the default location which is the directory of the tool click on yes and now we have those images backed up if you go inside of the directory of the tool you can see that it's put it inside of a backup.zip file we can go ahead and extract this and now we have the separate applications or games go inside of here and we have the images for those now i'm also going to show you very quickly that you can also replace these images by right clicking on the thumbnail and clicking on replace image and then simply choosing the image of your choice i'm going to use my logo as an example on this video double click on it You'll get this message and then click on OK. Click on apply changes. Now the status will change to upload and then completed. So once you've replaced the image, if we go ahead and reboot our console, now as you can see, the image has now been replaced. We now have the XX Solution logo instead of the Playroom logo, and that works a treat. So you can obviously replace all of these different images on the front screen of the applications and games. I think that's pretty awesome indeed. So go ahead and check that out if you want to do that. One thing to mention is make sure that you are connected to the FTP settings when you're using the UI editor as it uses it to replace the images and fetch the images on your console. So the next thing we're going to look at is the second tab which is peek and poke. So all you'd want to do in here is simply make sure that you have your IP address in this box like so. Make sure you always have it correctly otherwise none of these will work. Go over to the PS4 playground, go over to code execution and hit go and then we're going to use the PS4 me API which is a little bit more stable when you're using the peek and poke tool and dumping and stuff like that. The PS4 API is primarily used for the RTE tools such as Advanced Warfare and Ghost. So for this demonstration, I am going to be using the PS4 Me a more stable API. Once it says waiting for payload, simply click on inject PS4 Me. You'll see that it says kernel patch works, waiting for connection. So after that, we can go ahead and click on the PSN button and load the game of our choice. I'm going to be using Advanced Warfare for this tutorial. So what I'm going to do now is wait for the game to load and put us into a local play game with bots just to show you how this works. Wait for the match to load and then we're going to click on the connect button make sure that you wait for the game to load once you're inside of the game and we've chosen our class and all of that jazz we can go ahead and click on connect make sure you do that otherwise it might cause problems for you so now what i'm going to do is simply click on connect and as you can see we have a new connection enjoy your modding and we can go ahead and click on the drop down menu and we can see the current processes on our playstation i'm going to scroll to the bottom where the default mpl file is and this is basically the game of advanced warfare Select that and then we're going to click on attach. You'll get a message box pop up, just hit OK. And now we are pretty much set to go ahead and peek and poke. So the base address is the address that you're going to be peeking in memory. And the length is the length that you're going to be setting. So how much you can see of the data. And obviously the more that you have in length, the longer it's going to take. So if you set a minimum length of say 100, then the quicker it's going to show. So what I've done is I've put a base address in and a length of 100. And as you can see, it goes to the exact length. If I up the length by a thousand and put peak, you can see that we have a longer length 
graph and we have some data in here and we can simply go ahead and edit this data if we want. So if we click on a random bias, so if we click on this, you can also see now that we have the selected address box and it shows you the actual address that it is. So it works out where you're located within memory. You can also see from the base address, we have the base length. So it's 2C0 in hex to this address. And if we move it, it goes up 376. So it actually shows you the base length from the base address. So that's really handy as well. Another thing we can do in here, if we highlight some data, you can see the selected length is 9B. And if we highlight a lot more, that changes as well. Again, very useful stuff indeed. We have some functions down here. This is very cool indeed. We can go ahead, dump window, dump selection, and we also have invert color scheme. So I'll quickly show you that. If we go ahead and press this button, you can see it's white and now the text is black. So if you do like and prefer that, then obviously that is up to you. That's personal preference. In my opinion, I think this looks very nice as it suits the tool. If we go ahead and click on dump window, this will dump the current window we have, but all of the data inside of the hex view, it's going to dump that. So if we go ahead choose our desktop and just call this gg hit on save you'll see now on our desktop we have that file dumped and it's around four kilobytes obviously the more length the more data the bigger the file is going to be dump selection is very similar if we highlight some data click on dump selection that pretty much does the exact same thing i'm just going to call this ggg hit save and boom we have that on our desktop as well and obviously that's a lot smaller being 218 bytes as there is much smaller data being dumped moving on to the search function now this is very very useful if you're searching for ammo or you're searching for a specific value in the game so you actually get the option you can actually search in hex or you can search for text string which is obviously no text so if you want to search for text within the data you can also do that so i'm going to use hex for this example because i know that's something data will come up if i type in ff hit on search you can see it takes me to the first occurrence that i found if we click on next occurrence there is no more searches found for ff so we know there's only one ff hex inside of the data that we have selected i know that there's more bytes for 11 so if i search for 11 hit search it finds the first one go to next and as you can see it will jump straight directly to the next byte for 11 go to next again go to the next one so on and so forth so again really really handy stuff there and it's the exact same for string as well you can search for a word or some in string and it would do the exact same thing and it'll go down to the next line of string below that we also have a little box that says auto update if we go ahead and click that this will basically keep refreshing every second or a couple of milliseconds and it will update in real time so that you can see the data is actually changing obviously there's nothing at this selected address but if you have an address with loads of data changing and you want to see it you can check that and that will basically allow you to see in real time what is changing and then last but not least we have the value conversion so obviously if we put the decimal as 250 you can see that in hex it's fa if we change that to 33 in hex it's 21 and you can basically add lots of different numbers it's just a decimal to hex calculator that you can work out what the actual value is you're looking for or if you need the hex value into decimal obviously being a number you can see that as well so this is really handy if you're looking for something or if you need to know what it is in hex or if you need to know what it is in decimal that is pretty much it in the peak and poke tab so last but not least we also have advanced warfare and we have the cod ghosts rt the advanced warfare and cod ghosts rt i'm not going to be covering in this video because this video will be way too long than it already is if you do want to see separate videos on those i'll be happy to make the overview on both advanced warfare and ghosts on this tool as well i believe like i said earlier in the video modded warfare will be making an overview on both of these rt tools so if you do want to go ahead and watch his video you can also watch that and it will show you what it's like within the cod ghost rt and the advanced warfare rt last but not least we also have credits now this is obviously where credits due we have myself exit solutions we also have modded warfare the main developer the people that created and edited and modified the payloads we also have that there and the mod menus as well too much for you obviously create those so if you want to go ahead and check those out then be sure to click on one of these names and this will simply take you to their channel or their ngu profile so that is pretty much it guys ps4 aio tool check out the forum posts comment rate subscribe and do the good stuff and i'll see you guys in the next one peace